Will you join me in the prayer of vocations? Jesus, you are the good shepherd. You know each of us and you call us by name to serve the faith. Help us respond generously to your voice. Give courage and guidance to those who are called to a priesthood, diaconate, religious life, single life, and sacramental marriage, so that they may respond wholeheartedly and serve devotedly. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Please stand. Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. My name is Father John Norman. I used to serve here a couple of years ago, and so it's nice to, uh, I'm back for a few days to see family and friends over Easter, and was invited to be able to celebrate Mass with you guys this morning. So, grateful to be here with you. As we begin the celebration, let us first acknowledge our sins preparing ourselves for these sacred mysteries. You were sent to heal the contrite of heart. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. And on this feast, this Wednesday of the octave of Easter, we recite together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and on earth peace to people of goodwill. We praise you, we bless you, we adore you, we glorify you. We give you thanks for your great glory. Lord God, heavenly King, O God, God, Almighty Father, Father, Lord Lord Jesus Christ, Christ, only begotten Son, Lord Lord God, Lamb of God, God, Son of the Father, Father, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. You take away the sins of the world, receive our prayer. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, have mercy on us. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord. You alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who gladden us year by year with the solemnity of the Lord's resurrection, graciously grant that by celebrating these present festivities, we may merit through them to reach eternal joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the Acts of... from the Acts of the Apostles. 
Peter and John were going up to the temple area for the three o'clock hour of prayer. And a man crippled from birth was carried and placed at the gate of the temple called the Beautiful Gate every day to beg for alms from the people who entered the temple. When he saw Peter and John about to go into the temple, he asked for alms. But Peter looked intently at him, as did John, and said, Look at us. He paid attention to them, expecting to receive something from them. Peter said, I have neither silver nor gold, but what I do have I give you. In the name of Jesus Christ, the Nazarene, rise and walk. Then Peter took him by the right hand and raised him up, and immediately his feet and ankles grew strong. He leaped up, stood, and walked around, and went into the temple with them, walking, jumping, and praising God. When all the people saw him walking and praising God, they recognized him as the one who used to sit begging at the beautiful gate of the temple, and they were filled with amazement and astonishment of what had happened to him. The word of the Lord. Rejoice, O heart that seeks the Lord. Rejoice, Rejoice, O heart heart that that seeks seeks the Lord. Lord. Give thanks to the Lord. Invoke in his name. Make known among the nations in his deeds. Sing to him. Sing in his praise. Proclaim all of his wondrous deeds. Rejoice, Rejoice, O heart that seeks the Lord. Glory in his name. Rejoice, O heart that seeks the Lord. Hold up to the Lord in his strength. Seek to serve him constantly. Rejoice, so heart, says he, the Lord. You send indeed of Abraham and his servants, sons of Jacob. His cho- he's the chosen one. He, the Lord, is our God throughout the earth of his judge prevented. Rejoice, so heart, says he, the Lord. He remembers forgiveness of his covenant, which is made binding for thousands of generations, which is entering into Abraham and by his oath of Isaiah. Rejoice, O heart that seeks the Lord. From the Holy Gospel according to Luke. That very day, the first day of the week, two of Jesus' disciples were going to a village seven miles from Jerusalem called Emmaus, and they were conversing about all the things that had occurred. And it happened that while they were conversing and debating, Jesus himself drew near and walked with them, but their eyes were prevented from recognizing him. He asked them, what are you discussing as you walk along? They stopped looking downcast. One of them named Clopas said to him in reply, are you the only visitor to Jerusalem who does not know of the things that have taken place there in these days. 
And he replied to them, What sort of things? They said to him, The things that happened to Jesus the Nazarene, who was a prophet mighty in deed and word before God and all the people. How our chief priests and rulers both handed him over to a sentence of death and crucified him. But we were hoping that he would be the one to redeem Israel. And besides all this, it is now the third day since this took place. Some women from our group, however, have astounded us. They were at the tomb early in the morning and did not find his body. They came back and reported that they had indeed seen a vision of angels who announced that he was alive. Then some of those with us went to the tomb and found things just as the women had described, but him they did not see. And he said to them, Oh, how foolish you are, how slow of heart to believe all that the prophets spoke. Was it not necessary that the Christ should suffer these things and enter into his glory? Then beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he interpreted to them what referred to him in all the scriptures. As they approached the village to which they were going, he gave the impression that he was going on farther. But they urged him, stay with us, for it is nearly evening and the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. And it happened that while he was at table with them, he took bread, said the blessing, broke it, and gave it to them. With that, their eyes were opened and they recognized him. But he vanished from their sight. Then they said to each other, Were not our hearts burning within us? while he spoke to us on the way and opened the scriptures to us. So they set out at once and returned to Jerusalem, where they found gathered together the eleven and those with them who were saying, The Lord has truly been raised and has appeared to Simon. Then the two recounted what had taken place on the way and how he was made known to them in the breaking of the bread. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. The Gospel passage that we hear today from the Gospel of Luke is called The Road to Emmaus. And the disciples who are going from Jerusalem to Emmaus, this is after the Easter events have taken place. They want to try and understand what's happening and taking place because there's been so much that's been a part of their lives these past days. Seeing and watching and walking with Jesus through all the moments that surrounded his suffering death. And then what's been this really confusing moment for them in the resurrection. What does all of this mean? And so these two disciples, these two friends, these two companions, since they had a journey ahead of them, began to walk on their journey and to talk about it with each other on the way. But one of the amazing things that happens as they walk is they end up meeting a third companion. Who's there? And it's Jesus. They don't recognize him in that moment. Just like sometimes we might not recognize somebody if we don't get a clear glimpse of their face, or if we see them from behind, we might think it's somebody we know or, or not, or, or we have a chance where sometimes we just have a case of mistaken identity where somebody looks familiar, we say, I think I know that person, but I can't tell you exactly where from. And yet, in 
this encounter, they walk with Jesus and they talk with him and they share with him all of the profound moments, everything that has happened to them, everything that they're trying to make sense of that took place in their lives, all of the celebrations and the joys, the things that were absolutely amazing that they witnessed and that they saw, and then the moments that were incredibly challenging and difficult in their lives that they witnessed and said, we thought things were going to be different than they were. And Jesus was there for all of that as they shared that and spoke that with them. Part of the gift of our Christian faith, of our Catholic faith, is the recognition that our God loves us in such a way that he will enter into our reality, that he can be present with us at any moment, at any time, at any place. And that he has an interest in what's going on and taking place within our lives. We don't have a God who's uncaring or just uninterested. But he invites us to be able to articulate, to voice, to share what is actually happening within our own hearts. Because sometimes within our own lives, there's so much that we try and make sense of that it may not be incredibly clear to us as we go through it and we try and say, I got to make sense of what's happening and what's taking place. And because, because Jesus is incredibly willing to be there with us, even if we don't recognize his presence, he'll still be there to hear, to understand, to sense what is going on within our lives and within our hearts. And as we share that with him, we give him the permission and the freedom to then be present to us in a deeper and more powerful way. Sometimes when we go through things that are confusing and challenging within our lives, we want to know in a moment that we are heard and that we are understood. And the gift of the glory of God being present in our lives, the willingness of God to be present to each and every one of us to hear about what happens and goes on within our days and within our lives, is that we don't have to worry about getting the words wrong. We don't have to be worried about whether or not we're going to express it or say it just right. You know, because sometimes in our lives when we try and communicate and share something, it becomes clear that the person that we're sharing with didn't exactly understand it the way that we were hoping. Sometimes the things that we want to say and share with somebody, you know, if we communicate it in a, in a text message or something different, because we don't have the tone of voice or because somebody can't see our eyes or our facial expressions, sometimes what we say and how we say it can be misunderstood. But with God, with Jesus who knows us, who knows our hearts, who knows us so incredibly fully and completely, we don't have to worry about whether or not we get the words right. Whether we're having a great day or we're having a lot of challenges within our lives, if we say, you know, Lord, the everything that's happened in my life these past days, it was... <clears throat> we, don't, we don't have to define what <clears throat> is. The Lord knows exactly what that is for us. And that gives us the freedom to be able to share and to express what happens within our hearts. And that gives the Lord the freedom to be with us. Even when we don't know what to make of what's happened and taken place in our lives, of the moments, of the feelings, of the senses, of wherever we might be the joy that we have, the resurrection that we celebrate today is one in which we look at incredible moments in Jesus choosing to suffer and die for us to give us the gift of the Eucharist, all of these incredible things that have happened and taken place. But what we hear in our scriptures as well is that whether we're here in the church or whether we're at school in the classroom or whether you know we might be at a sports or activity or something like that, or maybe we're just at home and getting ready to say our prayers before bed. 
God, even if we don't perhaps recognize his presence with us in that moment in time and place, Jesus draws near to us and is with us to hear us, to understand us, and to let us know that everything that he has done for love of us is truly for us and truly something that invites us more deeply into the gift of the resurrection, that it's something that happened in a big and cosmic way, but it's something that happens for us in a personal way as well. So the invitation for us is then to recognize that even when we're in moments of confusion or when we're in moments of joy, to share with the Lord these things that are happening within our lives and hearts because that allows the Lord to be close to us just as we desire to be close to him. Let us bring our prayers and our petitions before our Heavenly Father. the leaders of all nations be mindful of the needs of the diverse people they are called to govern and serve. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Bless us with an awareness of the abundant blessings you have given us in the drive to share our appreciative attitudes with others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who have died that through the mercy of our loving God that they be brought to the peace and joys of heaven. We pray to the Lord. Lord that all of God's creation chooses to open their ears for God's call and their eyes to see those in need. We pray to the Lord. Lord we pray in thanksgiving for all those who have answered the call to serve God to religious vocation. We remember especially Father Tom, Father Mosier, Father Gary, and our deacons. We pray to the Lord. Lord, for those that are sick and suffering in our parish and around the world, that they may be comforted by God's love and healing power. We pray to the Lord. Lord hear Heavenly Father, we bring our prayers and our petitions before you. We know that you are with us and that you hear us. Hear these prayers and answer them, for we offer them through Christ our Lord. Amen.
my brothers and sisters, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. Receive, we pray, O Lord, the sacrifice which has redeemed the human race, and be pleased to accomplish in us salvation of mind and body through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Amen. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation at all times to acclaim you, O Lord, but on this day above all, to loud you yet more gloriously when Christ our Passover has been sacrificed. For he is the true lamb who has taken away the sins of the world. By dying, he has destroyed our death and by rising, restored our life. Therefore, overcome with paschal joy, every land, every people exults in your praise. And even the heavenly powers with the angelic hosts Sing together the unending hymn of your glory as they acclaim. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like the dewfall, so that they may become for us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, he took bread and, giving thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice, and once more giving thanks, he gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and George, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. 
At the Savior's command, informed by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. Amen. Lamb of God. Behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word that my soul shall be.
Let us pray. We pray, O Lord, that the reverent reception of the sacrament of your Son may cleanse us from our old ways and transform us into a new creation. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. May Almighty God bless you, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in peace. Alleluia. Alleluia.